Opioid addiction and overdose deaths continue to rise in Ontario during the pandemic. That's been especially true across the north. Charnel Anderson covers the Northwest for Ontario Hubs. She's been looking into what the parties are promising this election to deal with the crisis, and she joins us now from Thunder Bay. Hello, Charnel. Hi, Dan. Now, although Ontario has been experiencing an opioid crisis for more than a decade, the last few years has been especially difficult. I want to pull up a graph that illustrates the annual number of opioid-related deaths in Ontario over a five-year period. It's a pretty dramatic rise from 2016, where deaths were under 900, to 2020 at almost 2,500. And then when we look at 2021, the past year, where there were reported deaths were over 2,800. So, Charnel, let's start it off. How has the pandemic exacerbated the crisis? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, well, just looking at that graph, in the last five years, almost 10,000 people have died from opioid-related causes. And I think it can be hard to imagine the impact of such a loss because, you know, 10,000 people, that's more than the population of many small towns in Ontario that are just gone. Um, and as you say, it's gotten worse. You know, over 2,800 people died from opioids last year alone. Uh, so there's been a significant jump in the number of opioid-related deaths since the pandemic began. And uh, research from Public Health Ontario says that there's a number of reasons for this, including um, the increasing volatility of street drugs. So, you know, fentanyl alone is really deadly and responsible for the majority of opioid-related deaths these days. But now we're seeing drugs that are cut with other drugs, like sedatives, which can increase the risk of overdose. And a lot of times people don't even know that the drugs they're using are cut with these substances. So the unpredictability of street drugs is a factor. But during the pandemic, we also saw increased isolation, of course, uh, reduced access to health care and community services that support people that use drugs. So those have had an impact as well. Now, you cover Northern Ontario for TVO.org. I'm wondering how the opioid uh, epidemic has sort of affected that region in particular, where services might not necessarily be readily available uh, compared to other parts of the province like Southern Ontario. Yeah, so I mentioned uh, the public health report, and that tells us that during the pandemic, while the absolute number of people who died from opioid-related causes was higher in Southern Ontario at over 1,500 deaths uh, compared to 241 deaths in Northern Ontario. Um, but when you look at the rates, which have been adjusted for population, you see that people are dying from opioids at a higher rate in Northern Ontario. Uh, so that's roughly 28.5 opioid-related deaths per 100,000 people compared to a rate of 11 opioid-related deaths per 100,000 people in Southern Ontario. And as you say, I think this issue is really compounded by a lack of services. You know, there's really only one withdrawal management center in Thunder Bay that turns away as many people as it accepts. Um, and in March, uh, temporary funding was announced from the province for 34 new treatment beds, which I'm sure will help some people and hopefully reduce some of the strain. But then you have to think about smaller communities that are ways away from urban centers. Um, so there's certainly room for improvement in terms of access to services. Now, you spoke to a couple of experts uh, on their recommendations for some solutions. Uh, curious to hear, what did they have to say? Yeah, so I spoke with uh, Tara Gomes, who is a researcher and scientist at uh, Unity Health Toronto, and she's also an author of the Public Health Ontario Report, who said that Ontario's opioid crisis is a public health emergency and it should be treated as such. Um, Tara talks about this multi-prong approach that she would like to see, which includes increasing access to treatment for people who need it, but not everyone that uses opioids is addicted to the substance um, and not everyone will do well with treatment. So that's where um, harm reduction strategies like safe consumption sites and safer alternatives to the unregulated drug supply come in. And again, as I say, as I said, you know, a big part of this is access. Um, Tara says that these things need to be broadly accessible, no matter if you're in a small rural community or a large urban center. Let's maybe take a step back and sort of look at uh, the Ontario government's approach so far. What have we seen when it comes to tackling the uh, opioid epidemic? So uh, in 2020, uh, the previous Ford government announced that uh, what they called the Roadmap to Wellness, which promised an investment of $3.8 billion over 10 years in mental health and addiction services. And through this initiative, um, investments were made in rapid access addiction medicine, medicine also known as RAM clinics, which are kind of like walk-in clinics where people can go to access treatment. Um, as well, there's been more funding for addiction and treatment with withdrawal beds, such as uh, the ones in Thunder Bay that I mentioned. 
Um, and you may remember back in 2018, uh, the Ford government completed a review of supervised consumption sites, and this review found them to be effective in reducing opioid-related illness and death, like much of the research suggests. Um, and so at that time, the government announced that they would provide $31 million in funding to a maximum of 21 sites, essentially capping the number of supervised consumption sites, which means now, you know, four years and thousands of opioid-related deaths later, there's still only 21 supervised injection sites in Ontario that are accessible to the public, uh, the vast majority of which are in southern Ontario. As you know, we are in the middle of an election campaign, and I am curious to know uh, what the parties are planning, the four major political parties are planning uh, to address the opioid crisis. Uh, let's start with the Conservatives. Have they made any sort of promises uh, in their new platform or, or any other promises going forward? Right. So this is actually a tough one for me to answer because uh, the Tories did not respond to multiple requests for comment. But if we look at the new Ontario budget, which um, the Tories say they will pass if they're reelected, uh, they say that they will make an, ad an additional investment of two, $208 million to build mental health capacity in a range of areas, um, including addiction services, supportive housing, mental health, and Indigenous mental health and addictions. All right. Well, how about the NDP? What do they have to say? So a spokesperson for the NDP says that if elected, they will declare uh, the opioid crisis a public health emergency and invest in addiction rehabilitation, detox centers, and harm reduction strategies. Uh, the NDP say they will remove the cap on supervised injection sites, fast track approval for these sites um, in the north in particular, and work to ensure safer alternatives to the um, unre unregulated drug supply. And we'll um, as well, the NDP. Sorry, <laughs> the NDP say they will also work with the federal government uh, to decriminalize personal drug use and reduce stigma of drug addiction. And let's let's turn our attention to the Liberals. Is there anything that sticks out from from their promise when it comes to addressing the opioid crisis? Yeah. So a spokesperson for the Liberal Party says that they will also lift the cap on safe consumption sites and approve applications for underserved communities. Um, if elected, the Liberals would reconvene the Opioid Emergency Task Force and make investments to, quote, prevent, intervene, and treat opioid addiction and overdoses by providing things like naloxone kits, uh, fentanyl test strips, and other harm reduction supplies to pharmacies, uh, community spaces, and first responders. And to round out the four, finally, what plans do the Greens have? So the Green Party says that if elected, they would also declare the opioid crisis a public health emergency. Um, and their plan to tackle this issue includes decriminalizing drug use, establishing a 24-7 province-wide mental health uh, crisis response line, and creating crisis response teams which would respond to overdoses. Uh, the Greens plan also includes increasing the number of treatment beds, uh, expanding harm reduction programs, including safe supply, as well as other initiatives around um, supportive housing and healthcare access. And finally, uh, the Green Party says that they would also reboot the Ontario Opioid uh, Emergency Opioid Task Force in order to kind of further develop a strategy to address the opioid crisis. Charnel, unfortunately, it's an unfortunate story, but an important one. So thank you so much for uh, sharing your insights on this one. Thanks, Jan. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.